Welcome back, everybody. It's time for some more Ultimate General Civil War, this no infantry campaign challenge on the Confederate side. If you didn't see all of the previous episodes, you can click on the link in the description. It'll take you all the way back to episode one. We are in the home stretch. We're on to the Battle of Cold Harbor, which is the last major battle before we get to the series of battles that end in the invasion of Washington, D.C. itself. So this is the Battle of Cold Harbor, and... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the historic battle as we get into this. This was one of those battles that Grant uh, did not handle very well at times uh, by his own admission. In fact, when Grant uh, was writing his memoirs, he talked about the final assault, I believe, on June 3rd at Cold Harbor as being uh, an attack that he regretted ever having made because he said there was no value to it. it and even with the casualties, uh, especially with all the casualties, it just didn't achieve anything that made those casualties justified in any way. So you can see right away, at least for now, that we're showing a significant advantage in manpower and in guns. That's not going to last. He's probably going to have, by the time it's all said and done, well over 100,000 men in this battle, which would be in lines with what it was historically. Uh, about 120,000 men on the Union side, about half of that, maybe 58, 60,000 on the Confederate side in the historic battle. Uh, interestingly, this battle was fought on another Civil War battlefield. It was fought near Mechanicsville on the old Gaines Mill battlefield from 1862 during the Seven Days Campaign. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this all set up and ready for these. It's kind of broken up into phases here and there. This first phase, I don't expect a whole lot to happen. Okay, so this first phase, we're mainly just going to sit tight. Make sure he doesn't break through anywhere. And maybe if we get lucky, use these long-range guns uh, to do something. I do have one set of Napoleons here, just in case he does decide to attack. And then we're going to hold these sharpshooters on either side. We've just got to be careful he doesn't mass a bunch of troops and attack anywhere. Now, I don't know if these guns... You see, if he, if he decides to park guns out here, I may have to move mine forward in, in order to be able to actually hit anything. The four-inch siege guns have a nice long range to them. But we'll, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that. We may need to move those forward. We'll keep the Napoleons right there in the center. I'll just drop out. If anything of interest happens, we'll show it. But I think we'll probably not be showing much action until the next phase. Okay, so this is going to be one of the trickiest parts of this battle because this is one of the few times I'm going to actually have to go on the offensive. In order to keep the battle going as the Confederates, you have to take this objective here, um, Magnolia Woods. If I don't take Magnolia Woods and have it at the end of this two-hour mission time, I lose the battle. That's the end of it right there, which I don't really understand why it is that way, but that's the reality. Now, right now, it looks pretty favorable. I've only got a 4,000-man disadvantage, and I've got quite a few more guns than him. It's not going to last. He's going to end up with well over 20,000 men here. He's going to get reinforcements from the north and some more from the east. So what I've got to do is I've got to quickly drive Harden out of this uh, objective here in time to be able to move my battle line to these trees and get my guns up close to support so that they can drive off any attacks. And I put all of my batteries over here uh, so I don't have to pull them through these the swamp here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with all of these men. Now I do have to hold the line a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to put a unit there, but everybody else I'm going to send up here so we can avoid this swamp. I'm going to throw these sharpshooters in right there so they can be shooting at Harden and help to drive him off. Because I've probably within, I would say, 20 minutes to a half hour, I've got to get him driven out of there so I can start advancing. If I if it takes any longer than that, I'm, I risk getting into trouble. You can see he's got steady morale. It was heroic, so we're already driving his morale down. That's good news. It looks like Ledley's going to come down to help support there. Okay, we've taken out 100 of Harden's men already. There we go. All right, we did route him, but I'm... Actually, not even in position yet to 
be able to move on the objective. So he'll probably re reoccupy that fortification. That's one of the tricky parts. One of the things we have to worry about here is that he occupies the fortifications with the reinforcements. Because if he occupies those fortifications while I got guys here, then that makes it really hard because they get those really strong bonuses to melee combat and then they inflict a ton of casualties on me. So I've got to be able to get out in front of those to where he can't reoccupy them. And I've got to get these guns moved. Right, start moving these sharpshooters up. It's going to take them a while through that swamp. There we go. We got Ledley driven out. Right, we got to really quickly move on this objective now. There's Harden. He's going to try to come back. Okay, I gotta start moving the guns. If I move them now, I don't have to move them when he's got a whole lot more men because I'm gonna need those guns staying hot the whole time those reinforcements are coming in. Harden's gonna try to get all the way around on this side and hit my flank. I'm actually cool if he goes down this way, but I don't think he's gonna do that. All right, we gotta drive Bartlett out of this fortification, otherwise that's gonna be a pain for me the whole time. All right, we secured the objective. No, we're not gonna move any of these guns into that area. We gotta get Bartlett out now. Oh, there he goes, see, that's the problem. Fall back, fall back, fall back. You're gonna get nailed with melee combat here. See, this is the thing I hate, and, and you'll hear me harp about this over and over again. I hate that they can occupy fortifications that I'm standing on. It drives me nuts that they haven't fixed that. See, now Hunt's going to start losing a ton of men because he's in the fortifications and he gets the bonus for the melee combat that you get by occupying these fortifications. Same thing with Bartlett. We're going to have to drive him out of those, too. See, now Hunt's going to get driven out. Thankfully, my guns are going to start opening up on this guy. But Hunt lost 200 men and got driven off in the process. Same thing's gonna happen to Fife, he's gonna get driven off. Now these sharpshooters are getting caught in melee combat because of it. Ah, oh, that drives me nuts. It just completely messes up everything. Hunt's lost 300 plus men because of it. Fife's lost probably 200 already. Ugh. Oh gonna make it very hard for me to hang on to this. This is the most difficult part of this battle, really. On the Confederate side. Finally. Hundreds of casualties later, including in my sharpshooters. Let's bring Taliaferro down here. We've gotta keep him from being able to do that again when his reinforcements start arriving, which they just started arriving. All right, we gotta drive this guy out and do it quick. That's what I should have been able to focus on before his reinforcements arrived was driving those guys out instead of having to deal with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull Fife down here and bring Kennedy up. I should have some time to be able to do that. All right, I probably
probably got to move up a little bit here. Problem is, I can't start Kennedy moving until Fife's in place, because otherwise he's going to advance with Fisher. Unless, let me get over here and start firing into his flank. Wavering morale already. That's fantastic. That was too easy. Very helpful. We'll put these sharpshooters out on this flank. We can start firing on these guys when they come in. All right. Let's pause for a second here. Okay. 55 minutes. We got to hang on. All right, Kennedy. We're going to need you up there. I'm backing these guys up. Good, Harden. I wanted you to show up because I hope we <laughs> completely wipe you out. Make that guy disappear. Oh, here he comes. Darn it. Okay. I was afraid he might try to pull that off. Fife's in zero condition, too. I may have inadvertently put myself in a difficult position here. If we can drive Fisher off with these sharpshooters, we'll send these guys down to help. But Fife's not, Fife's not going to be there in time to stop Robinson. Okay, sharpshooters go. Oh, Robinson changed his mind because Fisher got driven back. Whew. That helps. All right, now we can we can actually send these guys back up this way. Oh, didn't think they were in range to be flanked like that. Sharpshooters, hold up. Don't advance. What are you doing? Here they come. Thank goodness I got these guns in place. All right, I got to drive airs out of here. slow down for a minute here because we're going to need every bit of this. Oh, these guys are too close. And they won't listen to my fallback orders, so I'm going to have to do it this way. As long as I don't let him occupy these fortifications. Oh, these guys got to fall back. These guys look like they have occupied fortifications. Ah, oh, that's a three-star unit, and I'm taking way too many casualties. I'm not going to have enough to reinforce all of them.
Okay, otherwise we're okay. We got 28 minutes to go. Here come more of his reinforcements. Get out of there. Now they're going to retreat right in front of him so he can continue to fire on them. Ah, uh, no. What are you doing? Don't let these guys get close enough to occupy fortifications. Right, I think we're going to be okay. Just took way more sharpshooter casualties than I wanted to. That was ugly, but I think we'll be all right. There, now we drove those guys off finally. And he's going to come right back. He's like, run from the fortifications. Jump back in the fortifications <laughs> within three minutes of each other. We're going to wipe airs out. Hurry up and drive Schweitzer off before he causes too many casualties on the sharpshooters. All right, he's driving off a unit, but it's not not in enough time to. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, that was really close. Okay, so here we go. Now we face thirty-five thousand men. Uh, we're just going to continue to face chunks of men like this. All in all, I know it's going to be over a hundred thousand before it's all said and done. And when we get to June third, he's probably going to have massive amounts of uh, of manpower. So. Uh, we've still got the advantage right now, particularly when it comes to artillery, but now we're going to be spread out over a pretty long distance. And this is where it becomes a challenge because if he masses his men in any one spot, I may have a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to kind of figure out how I want to do this here and get everything sorted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the thousand man units on the line wherever possible and it looks like most places that should be doable some of these get a little tricky though as far as the uh, locations they have to occupy we'll hold uh, smoothbore artillery in the in the upfront positions and then the uh, the long-range artillery I'll kind of move around as needed to get him in position to be able to engage his artillery pieces. So I'm going to put the smooth bores in these artillery fortifications. Okay, we've got a few extra thousand man units that I think I'm going to move down somewhere near the center so they can be back up not knowing where it is that he's going to go okay I think we're pretty good you can see how short the 24 pounder range is compared to a lot of the others you can see the numbers he's got me 3 to 1 and already a massive assault coming this way did I miss one of the fortifications it looks like I did right, we will throw these guys in there for now This is the thing I gotta worry about is these massive assaults. I gotta watch my sharpshooters too, because if he gets close enough, he's gonna light me up. Let's bring these guys down here. I'm gonna keep this on slow for now. This is probably gonna be a two part battle. I don't think we're gonna squeeze the whole battle uh, into the first episode. Man, he's got so many men massing on me that I can't even really focus on trying to take his artillery out first. 
as much as I'd like to. I'm honestly kind of surprised to see him moving forward like that. Typically, he doesn't do that. Uh, maybe because my numbers are so low, because I don't have two and three thousand man brigades. He may feel a little braver in advancing. We've got to keep an eye on the numbers. He's got me by about 23,500 men right now, and our guns are almost identical. This side, not, not as much to worry about here. I really want to get those sharpshooters out of there. So I'll put this thousand man unit there when I can. Yeah, we're going to target his artillery with our long range guns as much as we can. This is the threat we're dealing with, and this is the problem, is human wave assaults that I can't throw off with the number of men that I have. Like this right here. I'd feel much better about this if I get my back up down here. That way if one guy gets driven off, at least we've got a backup. And the longer this goes on, the better it gets for me. His best chance to win is at the very beginning of an assault. Because the longer it goes on, the, the fewer men he's going to have to attack with. He's already, you can see that advantage is down to 21,000 men. We've taken out 30 of his guns. he sits out here I'm good it's when he tries to mass attack that I have to worry here it comes again but now I've got a backup uh, this worries me a little bit I don't want him hitting those sharpshooters Get out of there, get out of there. There we go. Nice. All right, his advantage is down to almost only 18,000 men now. We've taken out half his guns. The sooner we take out his artillery, the sooner I can start firing on his men. So numerically in this battle, the uh, I, I think I might have just start to say this before the. The numbers actually match up, interestingly, uh, a lot like the Battle of Fredericksburg as far as the number of forces on each side as well as the casualties. Now this obviously was a, a longer battle. This battle, um, the dates of the battle are something like 12 days, but, um, oh, 
See, this is one of those awkward fortification areas right there. Um, Union lost something like, I don't know, 12, 13,000 casualties in this battle, but a good half of those came in maybe a half hour in the assault on the morning of July th or of June 3rd. And when Grant was what, writing the memoirs at the end of his life, he called that final assault at Cold Harbor one of his biggest regrets from the war. And that was one of those moments that, I mean, that whole Overland campaign, uh, Grant lost more casualties in the Overland campaign than Lee had men in his army. But he didn't retreat. I think it's a fair, oh, we just wiped out a unit there. It's a fair criticism of Grant, the casualties. Um, but it's also fair to say that you can't accuse Grant of just bludgeoning Lee to death throughout the war because um, if you look at what he did in the West before he came east to face Lee, uh, he actually sustained much fewer casualties than his enemies did. Okay, I think the worst has passed. I've only lost 600 men, almost 700 men. I have lost 30 guns. Most of those being smooth bores, though. And a lot of those smooth bore units are brand new artillery units that I just put into the field for this battle. And we can replenish some of those. I intentionally didn't use all of the guns I could have put into the field because I knew I was going to have to replenish some. And this being a multiple day battle, every at the end of every phase, every, every day of the battle, I can go back into the camp and replenish any of these units that are still intact as long as I have the same weapon available to me. Wow, his artillery is lighting me up over here. This is This might be a problem over here. We're gonna lose that 24 pounder unit. I don't have, I do have a backup here, okay. I have to reoccupy these fortifications or else I'm gonna have real trouble with melee combat there. All right, ammo. Where are my supplies? Right here. Dangerously close to the attack. Riley's Rangers, 2,000 casualties. Colonel Lewis Armistead killed. Well, he lived a, a year longer at a lower rank than he did in real life. Historically killed at Gettysburg. Mortally wounded, I should say. And actually, surprisingly, uh, his wound was not thought to be mortal at the time he was wounded during Pick Pickett's charge. It wasn't that serious of a wound. It, I think it came as a surprise to the doctors that he ended up dying from that wound. All right. The threat is definitely passed over here. Let's go ahead and shift some help up this way. Ah, that's such a difficult fortification. Some of these fortifications, the way that they're designed, make it really easy for the enemy to drive you out. And that's what's happening here. Uh, I should have had woods a little closer there. Thankfully, Riley's Rangers are still firing into the flanks of these guys. Now he's only got 6,500 more men than I do. But I'm not excited yet because I know he's going to have a bunch more when we get to J June 3rd. Now if we look at what we've got to do to win, hold at least one Magnolia Woods, which we do. 
hold all of these, which we do. Hold the left flank, which we will. This is a long battle. There's still a lot to it. It's far from an easy one. Although nothing's going to be as hard as Washington will be. Ah. See, the problem is I've got I've got to occupy those fortifications because if I don't, then his melee combat becomes too easy for him. The main thing with this fortification is you can see the melee bonus, 65% projectile resistance, cover bonus. Those are things I just have to have, even though it's a tough spot to occupy. Let's bring Ransom down. We'll shift Macintosh over. We'll get some more help in here. I'm gonna get these four inch siege guns to start firing on these guys here. We're about to have an advantage in manpower. Okay, I think we're good. Go ahead and start advancing this a little faster. We may get to the place where we can advance and wipe him out. I don't know that there's a way to win the battle here by advancing and taking those objectives, and I don't know what reinforcements he still may get. But by golly, we're going to kill everybody on this map. Yep, I've got the advantage now. Most of what he has left is right in here. And we're getting to the place now where a lot of these units are just going to start dissolving when they get down to about 300 men. Still three hours to go. If he doesn't get reinforcements, I probably can advance and finish him off. need ammo for a 12 pounder unit that's about to get wiped out let's pull them off the line these guys too I don't want them to disappear because if they disappear I can't you know at least if they've got men left I can reinforce them at the end of this phase those are all new units so it's not, not terrible that they're taking all those casualties no, yeah, we need re we need uh, supplies gonna keep attacking until he's got nobody left. No, not the 24 pounders. So I'm gonna start advancing from over here with these fresh units that haven't really been engaged. Just those three units alone have almost as many men as he's got left. How about we grab some supplies? Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. It's making it really hard to grab those supplies. 3,600 men left. Finally.
Come on, guys. You want ammo? Go get your own. <laughs> oh, hello. That's a large unit. All right, that was inappropriate. Get your mind out of the gutter, people. All right, let's see. All these supply... Supply trains just sitting out in front of me like this. Some of them are just too hard to capture. There we go. Nowhere to go. They're going to have to be taken on this one. Is that really all he's got left is supplies? He, well, he's got 1,900 men. That's just that one brigade over here somewhere. We're running out of daylight. It's 10.20 p.m. We've ca captured all the objectives that are on the map currently. We've just got one unit to try and corner, if we can. It's a three-star unit. We've got 51 minutes left here. If these last two objectives tick down and they're no longer contested, I'm curious to see whether or not the battle ends here. That would be amazing if it does. I avoid having to fight the big assault on June 3rd, but we'll see. Amazing how few casualties this guy's taking. Oh, he's got confident morale. This may not go as well as I hoped. Ransom won't charge. All right, all the objectives are secured. I guess we're going to see what happens. Uh, we still don't hold... Well, see, now we do have the victory conditions for the center. Victory conditions by taking Old Cold Harbor and Beulah Church. So maybe it will let us finish this off. guess we're going to find out in a minute. There it is. All right. So <laughs> we won't need a two-parter on this one. There's the casualties. A thousand men among my artillery, 37 guns, 1,658 infantry. That's a little misleading because I did reinforce my troops before this phase of the battle. So I probably lost three, 4,000 men in this battle. Uh, still, you can see the difference. We faced 86,000 men, actually about 95,000 by the time you figure the cavalry and the artillery, and uh, nothing but good to come out of that one. We, Man, we hardly rescued any of the guns that we lost. I did grab eight more 20-pounder parrots. That's huge. ton of supplies. That's almost 100,000 in supplies. Uh, we lost Louis Armistead, valiantly died in that battle. Let's look at Riley's Rangers, 4,200 kills from that spot uh, in that fight there. Uh, almost 4,000. I've said it for this whole campaign. 
if I had a couple more batteries of those four-inch siege guns, I could single-handedly win the war with those, but I've never gotten more of those. If I did this on the Union side, oh my goodness, that would be amazing. All right, let me know your thoughts about all of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map. We've only got a couple battles left. We've got Hall's Ferry, Harden Pike. If I remember right, Harden Pike's a tough one. I don't know how that's going to go because I usually, that I believe is one that I would just do a mass assault. Um, boy, that's going to be a tough one. And then Washington. So here we go. Let me know your thoughts. We'll see you again in a few days with the next episode. We've got three to go.